It's Team Tundra! Ladies and gentlemen, your TI winners! <laughs> Holy moly, where's Howie 2000? Get his ass on here. He's getting mic'd up. Oh, that guy's taking off his shirt. Hell yeah, let's go. Oh, oh, we're not done. Welcome. How are you? Hello, I feel amazing. You feel amazing? Yes. So th the first thing everyone always asks is, how does it feel to win TI? I am going to ask you, it is an obvious question, but the typical answer is it hasn't sunk in yet. You've had about 15 minutes. That should be enough time. So how does it feel? Uh, maybe it sunk in a bit, but it's still insane. I, I, I can't believe it. Sorry. Skeeter, how does it feel to have won TI? You're holding the Aegis. You're going to be inscribed yeah, no on the No one's going to take that from you. Yeah, it's no, you're okay. holding it you, very you tightly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had more stress using double down in pop than playing this finals, actually. Oh! Popper's not going to like that one. Wow. <laughs> uh, Saxa, how does it feel to, at the second time of asking, six years apart, you were teammates with this fool here, and now you've won TI with this incredible team. How does it feel? Uh, different than I thought it would. Like, I thought it was going to be much more emotional, but uh, I don't know. It just feels like a... I feel like there's still more games to play for some reason. I feel like we were playing somebody else still in the tournament, you know? <laughs> like we are playing Liquid or something, or just, I don't know. So, I don't know. It just... It still feels surreal, but, yeah, it's, it's an amazing feeling, of course, and... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just very proud of these guys. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I admire your play very greatly because I try to play mid, but I'm absolutely bloody awful. How do you do it? You told the other team, get good. That's what you said. I mean, honestly, I think enjoying the game is the biggest thing. Like, I don't think I've ever enjoyed Dota as much as in this tournament. You definitely I feel like I've played, played, really? I've played this game fun. for maybe 15 years. And there were times where I thought my passion is going away, but before this tournament and coming to this tournament, I truly fell in love with it again. I truly understood how cool it is to play this game and how fun, and especially with people that you enjoy it so much with. And I just feel very grateful. That's incredible. So what was it that made you fall back in love with the game? I mean, obviously, you started playing it way back. You've been playing it all this time. Is it sort of like a marriage with Dota, and then suddenly you realize, oh, she's the one for me? I mean, the biggest thing is probably qualifying to TI, because I've been playing, I've been trying to do that for a very, very long time, and every year I did not qualify. It felt really, really bad. More doubts came in, more doubts came in. But now that I qualified for once, I realized that I have this chance now, and all these emotions that through the years, went away when, when I lost every time, they came back. And that's what made me so much more, like I enjoyed the game so much more and I could just play without having any doubts. Wow. Well, thank you, yeah. I thought he was gonna say the Arcanas, <laughs> but that's cool. Excuse me? Nothing, continue. <laughs> Snaking, uh, managing to play uh, your, your famous Marana as often as you did. It felt like you guys kind of got, over the course of that series in particular, I felt, Oh, they got all these heroes that they wanted, but it also felt like it's very hard to ban against you. Like, you guys seem to have this pool of heroes that you can call on that you are all good at. That is a rare thing, isn't it? Yeah, we definitely had the stars align. Every hero we, we enjoyed playing on the patch was pretty strong, and obviously there's a huge amount of luck factor going to TI every year, but I think... All, all individually, our, our pool of heroes this tournament was very strong, so it's very hard for our opponent to just ban, ban out uh, all of our heroes. So, Aoi, if I can come to you, the coach. Uh, you've been around in Dota a long time. Obviously, you won TI as a player. Now you've won it as a coach. Uh, how is it different managing the team from, from afar without being able to be there actually playing, playing in a grand final? What are you saying in between the games to... to <laughs> get this team to play as well as they can? Um, I think for us, the, the thing about this tournament was we put in so much hard work before the tournament that going in, we knew that most of the work was already done. And all, all our talk between the games was pretty much about focusing on the stuff that we believe is the best Dota, our fundamentals, how we communicate. And as for being a coach, like, it's just it's so rewarding. And I'm so proud of these players. Like Watching them improve and become TI champions, it, it's, it's actually just so insane. It must be very satisfying for you guys to have figured out a way to play, yeah. 
Yeah. I'm going to keep stopping every time the audience wants to Please. cheer for you, lads. <laughs> Let them soak it in. They deserve it. I, I did have one. No, go for it. Owie, years ago, I told you if you ever won another TI, you had to change your name to Owie 3000. It has finally happened. <laughs> what? <laughs> I told you years ago, will you do it now? Owie 3000. You kicked me from Arkosh, bro. You left! <laughs> Was it worth it? Was all of this worth it? I think not. <laughs> Please come back. <laughs> 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 All right, well, we've actually got um, some highlights from the games that you just played. I've, I'm aware that you just played them, but I figure it might be, you know, in the rush of what's happened, maybe you forgot exactly what happened. Let's have a look at the replays. We're going to talk over them, and you can tell us a little bit about how these were going down. This is from game one, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Something funny? Oh, we've got chap standing in front of the screen. Ah, okay. oh, yes, yes. The Roshan fight, guys. What was going through your head here? I felt like there's no way we're gonna lose this fight. I was saying, guys, there's no fucking way I can die. Just, <laughs> just chill, just watch me. And uh, yeah, well, basically, I think Don't... most of our team fight communication has been about guys, just chill, 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 chill. Just chill, chill, chill. And that's kind of, I think in the true side, uh, you'll see it. We are just constantly telling each other to not dive. Don't dive. Yeah, don't, don't, just don't hold dive. formation. Yeah, yeah. Just, just chill, and you know, we're and going this to win is the a, I, I noticed one of the things that you guys did really well in the games was you'd get a kill, but then you'd have an, a, a way to get another kill and another kill, and you'd sort of follow the enemy as they're retreating. You're just getting more and more kills and just living all over the map. There was no way to run. Is that is that part of your play style to to not just take a big fight and go get an objective, but to continually get extra kills where you can? A lot of stuff we we fought is like, we can go, if we get the kill, it's good. If we don't get the kill, we're still happy. Like, nothing happened. And we just kind of wait for the enemy to fuck up. And, you know, once a guy goes out of position, we're going to kill him. But we don't have to. Like, we are happy, whatever is happening, like, we are not, uh, we are not in a rush. And I think uh, a lot of teams kind of fell into that. Like, the people got impatient, and we just were able to collect the free kills. I mean, one thing, you, you guys, your, your positioning, you always seem to be in a sort of tight formation, always sort of close to each other. It, it was incredible. It was, it was so coordinated. Uh, and who's calling those shots in game? Or is it just a collective thing? It's kind of a collective thing. I think uh, the main idea is something that um, Snaking and AY have been pushing a lot about how to team fight and what's the way to position. And they have been kind of bringing these ideas to us over the past year and kind of pushing it more and more and more until we all got on the, same on the same page. And then in the game, it can be anyone. It doesn't have to be them. Any anyone can just say the calls of like, guys, just remember what we talked about. Let's take the fights uh, that we know are good. So you guys just have that level of trust in each other. Obviously, you've been playing together all year. Uh, you've built up that level of trust. I mean, th this coordination doesn't come without, without an awful lot of practice. You've played so much Dota together at this point as a group. Is it just second nature to just trust each other, follow each other? I'll trust the call. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah, for sure. Now, if you notice, if you watch the replay, they actually stay in formation of their team logo. It's crazy. <laughs> That's how they move across the map. But uh, you'll see that in true sign. Is that one of the secrets, is it? The, the logo is kind of a, yeah. a secret to how to play. Yeah, if only they knew. Sorry, secret. You should have paid attention to the <laughs> replays. That's on you. Yeah, unbelievable. So, um, a 3-0 stomp. Did you guys think at the start of this season that you would be finishing the season at TI, winning 3-0 on the main stage and making it look easy? Oh boy, I mean, Go on, here we go. I mean, uh, I knew we can win the whole thing, but I never thought it's gonna be this easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Now, it's only happened one First time in TI history, by the way. Uh, TI7, Team Liquid, right? So, a record breaker, and you in particular broke a bunch of records at this TI. Yeah, you did. So, uh, most GPM, most last hits a minute. Oh my god. I think those are the two. Pretty insane. Carries all around the world are crying right now. That is. <laughs> the only things that matter in this world. The sad thing for me is you made your content piece about support players, and then we got to praise a carry player. I mean... You've just got to sometimes. Good job. Well, well, well done. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that's got to feel good. Huh? I mean, coming in here, record-breaking. Do you think your records will be broken anytime soon? 
I mean, I, I didn't even know I broke any records. I was just, you know, focusing on a game and playing it like it's a pop, you know? Damn. Like a very, very well coordinated pop. Damn. That's pretty hype. All right, so obviously this is the high point of your guys' season, but I'd like each of you to give me what the low point of the season was for you in Dota terms. What was the point where you were really feeling like, oh man, this is, this is not great? Uh, it was definitely at Arlington Major. Like we got like last place there and we were like uh, very burnt out from that point. Like we just came off of like a very long DPC, like a uh, month and a half, then we went to another LAN and then we went to like uh, the Texas LAN. So it's like, we were just all very burnt out. You can see it like people were like, people were just too tired to play. And like there was definitely the lowest point, like both Dota wise and like team wise, like I feel like we kind of like lost trust in each other maybe a bit in this tournament. And we were kind of like, we let ourselves like uh, go too much and we just didn't understand what was happening. So we understood after that, we need to like take a break, reset for a bit and then be ready for the next tournament to come. And we, we understand our mistakes and we learn from it from that tournament. Yeah, your performance at that one, I thought you guys were boned. That was no good. <laughs> but hey, you bounced back, huh? The tough times are what build you up. Owie, I saw you laughing when we asked the lowest point coming in so far. Do you care to share what that low point was? I, I think it was just Arlington Major. It was just Arlington? <laughs> I mean, like, just the whole of the Arlington Major. And that was a rough tournament. It was. It, just, was. it was like, the problem with that was like, no one really knew what was wrong because you're just burnt out and everyone's feeling like we're talking about the right things, we're sort of doing the right things and nothing's working. Mm. So it's just sort of despair. Just, <laughs> there's nothing. And, but yeah, we honestly, uh, like it was probably our lowest point, but at that tournament, I feel like the talks that we had like formed a foundation for our TI success. I think in particular, like Saxa brought us outside and he was like, starting a team talk, we had to have like an honest discussion with each other and it, it really led to us building up as a team and getting our shit together. Oh, I know I'm supposed to make jokes, but that was actually yeah, beautiful. We, we that, make, that was, was very, actually very incredible. Sweet. That was beautiful. Oh. Uh, just a, a quick change of pace. Post TI, you guys basically are going to cause a patch to happen. Yeah. This is what Ice Frog does. He sees a team having fun, winning tournaments, winning Dota, and he's like, this has to stop. What do you think he's going to change? And what do you hope he doesn't? I hope he's gonna change a lot. I, what I love the most is when there's a lot of things that change the game that, you know, are completely new and not just simple hero changes. And I'm happy if they just nerf everything that we played. I don't honestly care because now we get to play different things. I think whatever there will be, whatever kind of patch, we will find out what is good for us. I will find whatever hero I'm happy playing, like, and honestly, I, I hope for a big patch. You hope yeah. for a big patch, okay, Snake King. I also hope for a big patch, but I know for sure Wraith Pack is, you know, it's near its end, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I mean, come on now, that's, uh, it's gotta go. It, it, it might be unlucky go. for people who are trying to get some MMR right now, seeing the Wraith Pack, but, you know, it is what it is. And I'm very happy with the state of Dota, I think, Right now, like almost every Dota hero is viable. I think, how many heroes were I was unpicked in this tournament? I believe it was eight. Yeah, Wind Ranger, Techies, Techies, Sklinks, sure, Bounty Hunter. Who cares? Cottle, Cottle. Hope that guy never comes back. No, I hope he comes back. Necro, Meepo. Meepo. I really Aww. hope that guy never comes back. Uh oh. And then, I think there's one more. What, one at a time, please. <laughs> Can anyone tell what they're saying? Uh, a mystery that will go to our graves. Wait, 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 stop, 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 everybody. Shh. Hold on, hold on, I can see a guy who said it. That guy in blue. Trim Protector! Protector! Wonderful job. We got there in the end. Well, we should so, yeah, really know this. It was only eight. <laughs> We've seen that graphic like a dozen times, and I've written it down a couple of times. Not and, my job. Uh, I got some of them. I got yep. some of them. Good job. But yeah, you're right. It does seem to be in a good place. I mean, that was actually, according to the stats that I, I've been given, uh, the first Medusa grand final pick, all co never been contested, never picked or contested, completely uncontested. Medusa game three, and you just won the grand final with it. You know how that game started? We all just came back to the PCs and Oliver was like, oh guys, I finally got my Crimson Witness treasure. And then he pulled Medusa. 
Is that, that, that is okay, actually no, what no, happened. I know that's the story. All right, is all right, that, is that all right. actually what happened? That is what happened. happened. I came to the PC and I was like, guys, I have a crimson chest. So I opened it, that was Medusa. I was like, okay, guys, time for Medusa next game. And it ended up randomly being a good Medusa game. And you actually just, first time in a grand final, picked it. Is yeah. it normal, do you think, in game three <laughs> of a grand final to pick just a hero based on what Crimson Witness you got? I mean, I truly, you know, just felt it's a good Medusa game. And if I was in a pub, I would have also picked it. So, you know, what else what is there to do? It was you don't fake. question fate. A DD appears in front of Roche, you Roche. A Crimson gives you a Dusa, you Dusa. You, you Dusa. go in. You gave in the Kree, and you Dusa. Very good advice. I think, I think it aligns very well with the Skitter uh, main character mindset. Mm. He thinks like everyone are NPCs in his world, and like if the, you know, the storyteller wants him to play Dusa, the signs went his way. Fate. Incredible. Incredible. Incredible fate. So, I think uh, we're going to say to you guys, because you probably want to get off to a party and celebrate, and I really do appreciate you taking the time to come and sit here with us and talk for a little while. Uh, I think they have been absolutely phenomenal to watch all TI. You guys have been by far the best team. You showed it throughout the tournament, you showed it in the final. You are absolutely worthy winners and you've made us all very happy. So thank you guys so much for coming on the show and all the best. Can thank we get you. a massive cheer and a round of applause for Tundra Esports, your TI champions. And uh, that's it from us as well. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can go now. <laughs> no, it's all good. What an amazing TI. That was great. Uh, yeah. Jake, thank you so much for doing this show with me. I know that... Uh,